time to look at the front pages of the papers from around the world as well as analysis of those top stories for you. We begin with our sister publication as usual this day and it leads with uh, INEC. Uh, no act of infraction substantial enough to nullify the 2023 presidential poll, says the electoral body, argues same constitutional provisions applies to states, federal capital territory on 25% in 24 states, insists Tinubu won. Other writers there, article contends that election petitions put judiciary on trial. And the APC says tribunal lacks necessary jurisdiction to entertain petition on Tinubu's qualification. It says Obi has no local standard. Of course, the picture on the front page of this day this morning is that of President Muhammad Buhari arriving in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. He's gone for eight-day official visit, during which he will also perform the lesser Hajj. And above the name, below the name plate there, uh, the yellow strip, Chimamanda, Buhari Ainek, Blue Last Chance to Emerge Nigeria's Heroes, insist her critics deflecting focus on pertinent issues, deploying ethnicity. She also says she respects Wale Shoinka, Nigeria's Nobel Laureate. Nobel laureate, uh, but disagrees with him on 2023 polls. Uh, let's take a look at some of the stories above the nameplate this morning. Maintain tight monetary policy to check inflation, IMF tells Nigeria's central bank. And there, in that black strip there, Buhari Atiku Ohaneze Mon as ex Anambra governor, Mbadinoju dies at 78. Yeah, that was a former governor of Anambra state. All right, now to uh, the Punch newspaper. Uh, Tinubu won presidential poll. INEC tells tribunal he has some riders. President-elect clinched to a quarter of valid votes cast in 29 states. That's from INEC. Losing SCT, IREV hiccups can't invalidate APC victory, says INEC, the electoral umpire. Uh, and then just below that, you see the pictures. 256 stranded Nigerians rescued from Libya, Chad. Roads Vivo Jando asked tribunal to sack someone who the Lagos State Governor. House leadership, the top mast, just above the nameplate of the punch. House leadership, pro-G5 reps plot to scuttle PDP plans. National Assembly proposes jail term for Ponzi scheme promoters. Am Combas Arik Air founder, I read this yesterday, from Airlines Premises. That's interesting. That's from the punch. Mm. And the Guardian says oh, doctors gosh. are demanding salary review before May 29. How feasible is that? Well, the writers there goes, UK counterparts begin strike over pay. The irony of it all, NAD wants payment of reviewed 2023 medical residency training fund, admonishes reps on obnoxious bill sponsored by Johnson, and to summon NEC meeting in two weeks on next line of action is a follow-up on the uh, big story the Guardian has been following on the national stadium, the state of the national stadium. Of course, it says the minister is on the fire, and that's the sports minister on the fire over 21 billionaire request to fix national stadium uh burden of proof much ado about tunubu's asset declaration this and many more on the front page of the guardian all right let's look at international newspapers of the times now the times international newspapers the times all right well northern irish peace is my priority this is coming from joe biden who is on a visit uh to Northern Ireland is in Belfast for history talks. That's where he comes. That's where his relatives are. Yeah. And then uh, visa loophole is allowing Chinese spies to slip into Britain. That's for the Times. Okay. Do we have the Eye or the Guardian? No. Uh, let's see. We have the Eye. Of course, it's leading with the bleak economic outlook for the UK, and that's coming from the IMF. It says the UK heads for worst growth in G7 nations. And then the independent, the independent, Sunak tells striking taxes, withdraw your unreasonable 35% pay demand if you want a deal, as ex-health minister calls their action 
bonkers. The Daily Telegraph or The Guardian. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what paper next we have. Of course, it's The Guardian. Well, The Guardian leads with the sacking of the CBI Director General over allegations of his conduct at work. And you have a picture there of U.S. President Joe Biden arriving uh, Belfast on Tuesday. Of course, he was greeted uh, by the U.K. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. Yeah. All right. Let's call in Emmanuel Bello. Uh, to preview these papers, and we start as usual with our sister publication, this day newspaper, newspaper of records. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, <laughs> in the front on the front page, some interesting stories. Uh, INEC, the electoral umpire, is insisting no act of infraction substantial enough to nullify 2023 presidential poll. And of course, there are some writers there. They're saying. Uh, uh, they're saying that uh, some constitutional provisions apply to states the same, FCT, on 25% in 24 states, insist Tinubu one. I'll just take that one. And then what Chimamanda said, Buhari, Ainek, last chance to emerge Nigeria's heroes. Emmanuel will look at that. And then, uh, what's to again? Let, let, let's take those two, Emmanuel. Well, yeah, the uh, the INEC story it's uh, is in uh, I think it's carried by some people. Punch also led with the, what INEC is saying is the INEC pushback, the INEC defense. You know, INEC has come under a lot of fire uh, internationally. You can link those two stories. Chimamada saying the thing she's saying about uh, the heroism or the wise of Buhari and INEC, but INEC. Uh, it's a kind of balance. This day was able to balance the story. Chimamada saying one thing about the INEC boss, and of course, INEC itself on the same front page defending its record and saying that, look, there are no basis for you know uh, saying those elections did not go well. Remember that just the day before yesterday, or either yesterday, the president himself also commended himself for uh, you know for a, a transparent election. Uh, so yes, we, we expect this that INEC was going to push back anyway. Uh, and they, but it's not just on the front page, uh, on, on the pages of newspaper. Uh, INEC will have to go to court to prove that look. Uh, all the allegation against it, the you know the irregularities, the fact that uh, those uh, machines did not work on election day, and the uploading crisis and all of that, uh, it is it's going to be for INEC to defend that. But for now, uh, boldly, uh, you know, on, on, on the pages of newspaper, INEC is already giving itself a serious pass mark and saying that look, there is no basis for. Uh, you know, for not admitting those elections and that uh, by Tinubu won, uh, you know, fa fairly and squarely. Uh, they, they, that tells you indeed that uh, but what politicians like to say, that you should go to court. Uh, politicians would like to win elections and then ask you to go to court. Uh, I don't know whether that is their, <laughs> that's a statement in <laughs> having faith in the courts or it's a statement in saying that, look, you have no clear path as soon as as you go to court. But politicians just love to say that. They think winning is very important. When you win it, uh, the, sub, the, the, the crisis of going to court and winning it in court is another thing altogether. And this Maybe is playing out. Maybe because those they won want to go to court. Well, yes, but so uh, they encourage them to go ahead. Yeah, well, you see, I make itself saying that look, if you if you have no won elections, don't don't protest, don't say this, and just go to court. No, well, I'm just saying that the idea of asking people to go to court seems to be like a statement in. Um, I, how do you put it? It's, it's like saying, look, just go there. Do uh, Go there. If you win, fine. But for some people, they hear it differently. It sounds as if you are saying that there won't be any justice uh, for those going to court. And INEC is already saying that, that, look, even if it's at the tribunal or even at the judiciary, whatever, no court uh, of competent jurisdiction will be able to say what INEC did was wrong. And because INEC, sure. well, I, yes, yeah. very sure of its, sure its, its place. And it's going to be INEC words against the opposition to decide whether uh, there, was, there wasn't going to be any uh, there was any, any election so uh, but I, that's why a lot of people think that look the the Tinubu years are just upon us and we might just have to accept what has happened and I, Chimamada is already you know uh, the, the talking about it saying that look uh, the Buhari and INEC itself has not been able to write their name in, in gold they've not been able to become the kind of hero uh, they were supposed to be uh, but uh, there are people that will argue that you say okay yes. well, uh, because Buhari and, and INEC have got their fun for those who won these elections who, who think uh, they won the election. Buhari and I think uh, they are heroes. And um, election denials uh, or ele election result denials uh, you know, like are they always say, there. Like they say, one man's mate is another's poison. 
different Sometimes. strokes for different folks. Yes. Indeed. And she did make clarification, <laughs> which Disney also highlighted yesterday, about the Nobel laureate, for Professor Wale Shoyinka. She says she respects him, but on the, on the polls, she disagrees with him. And I think that's the beauty of democracy, where you disagree with people. Uh, but talking about the fireworks in the courts, and uh, uh, Manu Abelu, we're trying to highlight, you know, uh, the divergent views why people think that once Nigerians vote, the courts then have their own elections after <laughs> by voting. Uh, you know, there's been that view in some quarters. But on the punch, the front page of the punch, you have Rhodes Vivo, Jando, Ask Tribunal to Sock Saxon Wolu. Those are the governorship candidates of the Labour Party and the People's Democratic Party, respectively, in Lagos State. So, uh, what does this say about the 2023 elections in general? Are we likely to see more petitions, you know, uh, than we've seen in previous years? What does this say, really? Well, I, I don't know, but I just I don't know if you noticed that Indy kept chuckling, even when he first re read the story, mm. especially the gender mm. waiver, mm. uh, Lagos asking uh, the court to sack as, as an only. It's not just in Lagos State. In some state, there are petitions already. The tribunals, uh, you know, we're, we're at that stage then where you see, uh, I, apart from, you know, some you know, very, very remote cases in our history, it's difficult to see where, you know, uh, those petitioners were able to make a very strong case for the, you know, for strong, for actually, uh, you know, declaring elections uh, invalid in some places. You might see some kind of reruns or other things, but in most cases, uh, and I think it's a fa the failure to make a very strong case. Mm -hmm. INEC, for instance, is already, you know, war-ready, battle-ready to defend, to the last what is done in this election it's very important for INEC to do that because they don't want to lose any any of these cases whether it's at the state level local state government level, whatever levels they are they are prepared to defend those whatever elections they've done uh, you know with beavers and IREF and all of that and that is probably probably what makes it very very difficult and as this one you know that mm -hmm. the people who are going to court actually going against people already in government mm -hmm. people are already in power so uh, the resources is always on the side of those who are you know uh, you know they the, the, those who are on the defense, uh, but, but those on the attack, those uh, who will go to court. Uh, yes, like, um, uh, the, you know, there's, the story you read say is going to be a, 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 a testimony to how strong our judiciary it is going to be. The judiciary is on the spot right mm -hmm. now. I think it was Atiku who said that in, in the Disney report that the judiciary is on now trial. On, on trial mm -hmm. to see what they can do whether they can actually rectify some of the things uh, they've said. But it's a long road. Buhari himself likes to say that, look, he's been to those, uh, he's been in those kind of situations, I think four times, where they will go to court, and it's a long drawn battle that goes on and on, almost forever. Uh, and he's done that three. It's always very uh, tiring, sometimes. Rigorous. Uh, yeah, rigorous, tiring. Time-taking. Um, Time-taking, frustrating. <laughs> and so it, it, there are people who even back away before it's, I remember one time when Buhari was going to court, and some of his big allies said that, look, we're not going with this time around because they've lost uh, faith and he never got his victories from the courts he went to the field and, and so this is where back is deja vu all over it's uh, happening again it's a vicious cycle people go to court there's this long drawn thing mm -hmm. and you know these battles are fought all the way to the supreme court they don't just stop at the tribunal level so it's a long journey for those who have lost election and um and you know the funny thing like i said there are different folks or different strokes for different folks when when politicians win at the courts the court is fantastic. The judiciary is glorious. <laughs> when they lose, I have lost faith in the But you see, it's, uh, the, the <laughs> thing is that uh, election denial, you see, it's not easy. I've, I've, I've participated in elections that <laughs> we've, lost, we've lost in the past. Defeat yeah. is, <laughs> electoral <laughs> defeats are some of the most painful things. But Closure we must, is not, not, but we must learn to take easy. that. Be but even in the that. US, I mean, <laughs> Trump up to today think that he's... The, the that's for Trump. We must also make... That's, that's for so Trump. People, it's difficult to accept that we've lost the election. But perhaps as a country, we need to work on the accept acceptability yeah. of election results when yeah. we have more transparent less uh, you know hassle free or you know less troubled electoral process perhaps the outcomes I, I just want you know the, are yes, more acceptable. the problem is no, that it's so difficult for people these days no I, I they, and they don't mind the transparency if, mm -hmm. you, if you've lost an election mm -hmm. the belief is that you were rigged out and that there was rigging mm -hmm. it's it's not always you know not many people will think that look about there was I mean people congratulated winners okay. in these last elections yeah so that tells I, you that there's I, I an was, attitude I wish you had, I wish you had global, more time to talk about the doctors and the relationship between the doctors in England mm -hmm. and the doctors here in Nigeria. Both, both doctors are saying the same thing. Both the governments that are saying the same thing. You, what you're asking is unreasonable. 
Well, but, but that will live in there because we don't have all the time. Out of time, Emmanuel. <laughs> all right, that's Emmanuel. Thank you so much for being on daily.